Here you're ready for your dose of reality. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dr. Quack Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Quack, and I'm the important one, Mr. Mayhem, and this better be a really good reason why you brought me down here today. This is the day off, you know? I know, but you know, it's a great day because it's mail call! <sighs> I have mixed feelings on mail call. We have some really good fans out there, so a lot of really supportive fans. They send us in letters, they send us in things. And then there's one guy. Now he didn't talk to us last time. I hope he's kind of learned his lesson, learned he shouldn't trifle with the important one. Hopefully that guy didn't write in today. We were he who shall not be named better not have written in. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens here. So, all right, so I guess these are the questions yeah. that, that, that were sent in by our fans. You go ahead. All right, we received a lot of letters from all across the United States. Some of them we obviously can't read. They're just you know. Well, I like to pat myself on the back, you know, you guys are great and all that, uh, especially me, I get a lot of fan mail. We, we try and go for questions that actually have something that you, the fans, want to hear. Maybe a question about something that's going on in wrestling, something that we could offer us some insight on. So, so I guess, you, since you're saying I got the first question, all right. Yeah. Dear Dr. Quack Podcast, my name is Sally from Montana. Sally. Sally. Thanks for writing in, Sally. Um, she says here, uh, you guys talk about a dog, a guard dog, and sometimes you have a dog that appears on camera. Uh, what kind of dog is it, and what's the dog's name? Well, we do have a guard dog. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Right here. Look who's here. Come here. Look. Come here. There she is. Come here, girl. There we go. Yeah. This is our, our guard dog. Her name is May May. She is a boxer mix. So for those of you, she was a rescue dog. So if you're thinking about getting a dog, look into a rescue or, or into a no-kill shelter. You might get a great dog like this, and she is a great guard dog. She keeps things safe for us here in the office when we're not around. Yeah, she is such a good dog. So thank you for that question. Thank you. I appreciate it a lot. So now that you've got a chance to be on television. Good girl. <laughs> All right. Thank you, girl. Thank you, girl. All right, good girl. And there she goes. She's going to work here. See, and, and that, we're not here just to talk about wrestling. There's a lot of important things. If you've got a question about something else you'd like to get our intake on, please send us a message in through the Dr. Quack podcast. You know, I need my mailman here to keep up on things for me. Oh, yeah. So you ready for this next one? Oh, I'll read this to you. You're going to read it anyway, aren't you? I, I'm not going to want to hear it, am I? You are going to want to hear it. All right, go ahead. Hey, Dr. Quack, it's your number one friend. Don from Texas. I hope you're having a happy new year. I can't believe you haven't dumped that jerk in the hat next to you. I know, I agree. You know, he's a good guy. I, I, you know, good co-host here. Good cover. You were about to get sprayed. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy what, what you say in your analysis. Can you tell me who you would like to see back in the WWE or make a debut in the WWE? And if you can, please don't let the impotent one speak. Ah, ah, ah. Gone. <laughs> we'll have no more of that. No name calling, <laughs> you jerk. Oh, thank you, Don. I'm telling you, I'm really appreciative of your uh, emails all the time that you sent. Well, Don, that. since you didn't want to hear my opinion, I'm going first. Okay, go ahead. Who I'd like to see back in the WWE? Damian Sandow. Damian Sandow, that's a good name. I think Damian Sandow, if they brought him back in with Miz and Morrison, he'd be another great foil for him instead of John Morrison always having to do the jobs. You can bring in Damian Sandow. Who was the best part of the Miz, Miz Dow tag team? 
I gotta go with that. Mizdow was definitely awesome. He was funny to watch. The, the stunt double. See, d see, Don, I have an important opinion too. So it's not impotent, it's important. Learn your English. Now I'll give you my answer here. Since, you know, he asked, he asked me. He asked me. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. You are the co host. I guess you can answer. <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, who I would like to see back, I, I mean, it, it's so wild seeing them not here just because, you know, you have some other guys from it. But I, I'm talking about, you know, the Bullet Club. I, I miss, you know, Anderson and Gallows, honestly. They, they were a great tag team. I felt like, you know, when they were pushed right, they belonged. That's true. Uh, yeah, Anderson and Gallows, they tried to put it together, but uh, he, he is a lot better. Finn Balor is a marketable singles talent in the WWE, so I see why they, they tried to do it and it didn't work. Then they tried to do it with AJ Styles, and well, it kind of worked. Again, where AJ Styles is head and shoulders above them talent-wise. Yeah, and, and WWE stables right now really are not their format. No, and, and that's really a terrible thing. The, the last stable they had was uh, The Shield. And even that, they kind of booked into obscurity where nobody cared about it. Yeah. So, it, it, I, maybe that explains why back on the Quacky though, why th somebody thought AJ Styles might be going to AEW. Maybe forming the Bullet Club there, because that would work there. Yeah, I mean... Well, I don't see that happening. I, I see now, I now understand why that question may have came up. Or that answer may have came up. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, I would have loved to see them. Um, I mean, as far as, you know, making a debut, I, I think it's a lot of fans. They, I think I'd just like to see it just because. I would like to see Kenny Omega come back, come into the WWE. You know, maybe work something with Seth Rollins or, you know, some somebody of that nature. Daniel Bryan, you know just like to see the match. I ain't a huge fan of Kenny Omega, but from what I've seen of him, he's all right. I mean, he does some stupid stuff, but in the same respect, he's talented. I, I, I have to say, I've never seen a Kenny Omega match. I so, watched that one with him and Jericho in Japan. I mean, I love that match. It was really great. Uh, I'll say again, I've never seen a Kenny Omega match, and honestly, the things I've heard about him, I don't want to. I'm not a big fan of... You did wrestle a nine-year-old. Yeah, there's some other things. Yeah, go check that out on the internet. World-famous flea market for all you kids out there. Or actually, stop it and don't do it. <laughs> well, I in my wrestling career, I have done some funny stuff, some funny spots here and there. It was a small amount to make the match not be one-dimensional. When comedy is your only selling point of your match... I don't want to see it, and that's why I, do, I have never watched a Kenny Omega match. You leave Santino Morello alone. I wasn't a Santino <laughs> Morello fan either. <laughs> I wish the Cobra would have bit him and he would have crawled away forever. Well, thank you, Don, for that question. I think we got one more, don't we? One more, we do. Hi, guys. My name is Rebecca. I remember wanting to be a Nitro Girl when I was growing up. The Nitro Girls? Yeah. That's not something to strut. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm Okay. Okay, so she understands that, that was not the smartest call in the world. <laughs> I, I understand. The Nitro Girls, they didn't belong in wrestling, but let's let's continue with the question. We're not insulting you. You sounds like you were probably young teenager. I enjoyed them watching on Nitro with that five minute skit. That would come up like once an hour. Ugh, no. Shawn Michaels married one. That still doesn't mean they were good. Okay, we'll continue there. Alright, I know I'm a dork. Well, I noticed you guys haven't done any WCW pay-per-views yet, which is true. We have not. Yeah, not many. Uh, can you explain why you don't review WCW? Do you guys not like WCW? I thought they were great. Can you please review one of their pay-per-views? I think your analysis would be valuable in understanding more about my favorite wrestling company, Rebecca from West Virginia. Well, thank you, Rebecca. I'll, I'll take this one here, All this right. important one here. Go ahead. Yes. Um... Thank you, Rebecca. I I'll tell you, I liked WCW back in the days. Yes, for me as a child, I was in my teenage years when WCW came around. I really enjoyed it. You know, it was a contrast between the WWF and, you know, WCW. Because WCW was more the old school 
slow pace, methodical wrestling, you know, and I really enjoyed it. And of course, when you had like the NWO, they came out. That was a big factor in professional wrestling. Even though Eric Bischoff stole that from Japan, it's okay. You know, it was, it was a smart move to go steal that because it made money. And when WCW first came around in 1991, I was actually in the military and I was on my way to Germany. So for the first two to three years, I really didn't see a lot of WCW. When it first, when it transitioned from Jim Crockett promotions in the NWA to becoming WCW by itself, I caught a little bit of the beginning. And then I missed two to three years because they didn't show it in Germany where I was stationed. So I didn't get to see a lot of the beginning stuff. So it isn't that we dislike WCW. I really enjoyed the, the Monday Night Wars as they came to be known because every company needs competition. So if nothing else, streamline what doesn't work or to drive and push you to make something better. So I really enjoyed the Monday Night Wars and much as I disliked the overbooking of throwing everything at the wall every week that eventually was the death of WCW, which by the way, our friend R.D. Reynolds wrote a book on the death of WCW, so we're going to get a plug to R.D. Reynolds and his website, WrestleCrap.com. Check out that book. It is a very thorough analysis, and he, used, and he also writes it with Brian Alvarez, a famous and very good wrestling writer, so plug to, uh, plug to our friend there, R.D. Reynolds, but Going back to what we were talking about here, the death of WCW was really their own fault. Yeah. And we just, it's just we haven't had time to get to WCW yet. But I'm going to let you know, and thank you, Rebecca, for this, by the way, because you gave us a great idea. This Friday, we are actually going to start, we're going to go with our coverage of WCW. We're going to go through a little bit of history, and you will see the first pay-per-view that we're going to cover. It was Wrestle War. Which, when we reviewed this in the office, I, I told him several times, this is like, yeah, this was one I did not get to see until I just watched it here in the office just before we started filming. So, it, it's interesting, you get to see somebody who's seen it and somebody who didn't get to see it, but looking through, both of us looking through the eyes of professional wrestlers. And we even joked about this as he talked, as he mentioned there, about WCW being the Southern style, which was the slow, the long drawn out, try and continue the crowd, the slow build, the slow build, versus the WWF, which was big names, big characters, not a lot of athleticism. So it was a different style of entertainment. And we have East and West Coast review uh, mindsets, that, but we spent most of our wrestling career in the South. So it's, we get a lot of different looks at this pay-per-view. And, and watch for it on Friday, see what we talk about and what we think was good about this and how WCW trends from here. Yeah, definitely. Make sure you check that out. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Share this video. I want to see how far it can get. I'm trying to see if we can get 100 views on this video. So if you guys can, help me out. Help this man out. I need a pay raise because he's still only paying me chicken feed. Well, you know, that's what we got to do for right now. So help us out here. I'm Dr. Quack. I'm the important one, Mr. Mayhem, but one last thing, the vote for the man that should have held the world title but never did has already started. If you haven't voted, vote. And I'm out.